Hello everyone, I am Pallavi, the business head at HRX and welcome to HRX's Women's Day celebration. As a part of the celebration today, we are uh, bringing somebody very exciting here to have a chat with me and with you. Uh, but I'm not going to give, up the, give away the name so easily. I'm going to give you a bunch of clues about who this lady is. Um, she is a power pack. Well, I'm dressed to give away what she does in a way because I'm the rodeo girl today. But nonetheless, a few clues for you to understand who she is. She is a DJ and a drummer. She's a restaurant here. And I'm start, starting in a chronological order from her latest ventures up. She happens to be a fashion designer, a shoe designer, and the owner of a brand called Rinaldi Designs. She is the first polo player from India. And now, come on, it's time for you to guess. I'm talking about no other than Reena Shah. Welcome, Reena. Thank you. How do you feel about being at HRX today and sharing your learning with the women community at HRX? Oh, it's been wonderful um, and it's great to see a, a sports brand and being associated with it. We look forward to chatting with you and finding out every little thing, every little secret ingredient which you kind of put into your life to make it so exciting. Um, a little bit about your background from design, from being a Harvard graduate. What really changed? How did polo happen to you? So I've always been into fitness, um, especially in school. I used to be a hundred meters into school runner. Wow! But I came from a Gujarati conservative family, and I think I think thirty, forty years back, you you know, sports was not for women was not as considered to be a career. Right. So I couldn't pursue it, and uh, but I was always a big fan of sports. Everywhere I've traveled or whatever I've done in my fitness thing, I used to play squash, I used to play tennis. So sports was a way of life. But I always wanted to own a team and play for that. So this just came at the time when I just moved from New York. I went to watch a game and I just love, I fell in love with the horses and the game. And I had to give it a shot. I'm amazed at how this story is rolling out. That uh, prompts me to ask you, Reena. Um, you know, there is a certain advantage when you start early in life versus when you start late. Absolutely. Now, for, for me, what I see is typically kids training all through their childhood to sort of get to a sport, uh, to get to an ace level in yes. a sport. But you started out much later. Yes. How did that impact your journey? So, to be very honest, uh, I got on the horse for the first time in my life at the age of 38. And it really seemed like impossible because there was no encouragement, there were not too many women planes and the infrastructure of polo, there's no proper school. But because I took one year, like literally 365 days, just to learn horse riding. It was morning, evening, morning, evening. I had kept my life on hold. But every day I was going, I was getting better. So that gave me that, you know, I okay, I have to just cross this much. I have to cross this much. And then the first thing I did was fly to Argentina because that's the Mecca of polo. I was like, if anything has to happen, it has to. I have to go to the best school at least to learn it. Right. So I went to Argentina, I went to England and I went to Santa Barbara to do training. And then after that, it was just something that I believed in myself. And I just felt that it was so much of happiness I was getting just being with the horses, training. I still didn't know whether it would be a tournament. I arrived from training a night before. I did not even wait for a day. In the morning, I took a flight to Jodhpur. And that was the beginner's tournament. I said, either I play this just to give my confidence or then I'm always going to think the fear is always going to be there. Right. And from there, there was just no stopping. It's been now 11 years I play. Outstanding. Uh, Reena, you mentioned um, the love for sports in general and the fact that you wanted to sort of own a team and play for the team yes. and so on and so forth. But the kind of training that you're talking about seems really grueling. Yes. Um, where do people get such amount of motivation when you have to get into something so grueling where you're training morning, evening, learning yes, a sport, yeah. you're falling off the horseback. Yes. I mean, you have suffered injuries and Lots. fractures. Yeah. How do you overcome that? Where, where is that motivation placed? Where is that seated in that one discovers and at one, and how do you unravel it? I mean, to be very honest, it's a journey that today when I speak about it, literally I feel, what was I thinking? Because, you know, it has, it has, it has very fatal injuries in terms of if you've seen examples where, you know, because there is no control on that. Right. But I think with my first injury, it took me three months to get back. So it wasn't the easy journey. It was like, even that three months, I was like, let me like give up or maybe it's not for me. But I think what 
main thing I feel is that it is in your mind. So we restrict ourselves, you know, whether it's an age thing or I've been laughed upon by kids because I was just learning riding when they were like already much ahead. And also I had a lot from the fraternity. To be very honest, I don't even blame them. It was, it was ridiculous. Like a 40 year old trying to play the hardest sport hmm. ever trying to control the horse but you know I what I love about or the way I am I just love working hard of something at least before I give up yeah. so there were two three times that I have tried to quit because the injuries were two two three three months I couldn't go to work hmm. but at the same time I just know that if your you know mental and your physical power is strong right. and of course you have to work for it like I used to in just practicing how to hit the ball I had to do 200 balls every day I mean, literally, my body was like, I cannot move. But I, I'm not a person who quits. I can feel it. I can feel the kind of training you must have undergone. What is the kind of discipline that you have to follow for a sport like polo? What is it that you pursue when it comes yeah. to fitness, nutrition? What are your general habits? So, you're playing a very difficult sport. The whole body, the mind, everything is at work. Because you're not only going at a very good speed, you're controlling the horse and then you, and then you're, you have to hit it like a hockey. Mm. So you have to make goals, you have to hit the ball, you have to see who's around, you have to be safe. I mean, there's a lot of, lot of elements playing a very heavy sport. Mm. But the discipline comes number one. I mean, your, what you put it in, how you think, how you... Because every mood of yours also makes a very big difference. Absolutely. So you have to be strong enough to save that happiness. You have to feel very happy inside, one. Because if you're not happy, no matter what you eat, no matter what you put it in, not, not happening. So, I mean, I had to literally, the first year, all I did was wake up at 6, shut my personal life, no partying, no out, no drinking, nothing. Because, I mean, I could be distracted with something else or I can't wake up. I mean, there was no excuse. I mean, 365 days, I have only got up, went to work, again, went horse riding. And by 10 o'clock, I have to shut down. And yes, I lost people in my life, I, some friends I lost because I mean, then you're not cool enough to even show your face after one year, you have pretty much disappeared. Yeah, but your focus remained undeterred, literally. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is the kind of discipline one needs to acquire in life if you want to achieve yeah. something like literally the impossible that she managed achieving in life. Um, Reena, coming back to... Um, Straddling different roles in life. You've sure. done a lot. You are a design graduate. You went to Harvard. You tried your hands at entrepreneurship. You're, you're owner of a business. You're a restauranteur. How do you straddle these roles? Because I always hear women asking this particular question that we're held up in so many different walks of life. Like we have a family, we have children, we have this, we have that. How do we pursue our passion? And here we have someone sitting who's, who's kind of pursued a passion to the T. How do you do it? So, of course, you prioritize. You have to know what is more important and what at what journey of your life you are at. When I was a shoe designer for 18 years, that's all I did. Hmm. I, I knew that I wanted to go into music and I wanted to be a sports person. At that point, I didn't get an opportunity because I was on that thing of being disciplined and working hard to make money, to make a name in hmm. the field that I was in. In 2019, when I came very close, I was I was literally battling between Polo and Rinaldi hmm. being the shoe company hmm. in New York, in Bombay. I mean, there's no way a human being can do that. 2019, I just shut off my work. And I said, you know what? I've worked for 18 years. I, I have this opportunity, one life. I literally closed down the company and I dedicated to music. So I became a DJ and a drummer and I played Polo. Yes, I worked 18 years. I had to do that to make enough money to have that comfort hmm. but in for the last two three years I'm traveling everywhere being a DJ I'm playing polo and I literally but then yes I, I prioritize sometimes you don't get that yeah. opportunity but that's why I tell people that if you're passionate about something the opportunity will come you just have to be aware and grab it forget the age forget the gender hmm. if you don't then later on in life you're just going to be like I wish I had done this or I wish I had done that I'm saying at least give it a shot. Yeah. If it's not meant for you, I mean, it's not like you're quitting. At least you know for yourself that that opportunity came and you took it. I mean, I went to just watch a game of polo. Yeah. I didn't even know if that was my opportunity. But at least I went for a few days and sat on a horse and say, okay, maybe it's not for me. And especially my first 
fall, literally I couldn't move. And I was like, oh my God, I mean, what am I'm, I trying to do? I'm sure these are very grave injuries. I mean, horseback injuries are really very But bad. I just feel, I really believe that everybody is passionate about something. And you just have to be aware to, to balance things. Yes, you have to prioritize. You have to really, I have to, I mean, I don't give my personal life that much of importance because I know there is one life and I want to achieve the, these things. So, and I want to be happy about it because more you, are, you do something that you're passionate, happiness is just there. Sure. I'm super stoked to be talking to you because I'm sure you will give out nuggets of wisdom to all our followers which they can take back and use in their life. Um, coming to a very important question, you mentioned happiness is the key, Reena, somewhere while we were talking. Yes. And you also mentioned how you work towards becoming a happier person so that you could give your 100%. Yes. Um, just do touch upon how do you maintain that balance between that uh, physical well-being and that mental ability to keep yourself happy how do you do that because it seems to be one of the toughest ask of today's life so for me it goes hand in hand like i'm having a bad day at work the first thing i will do is go and either play sport or i'll go to my horses means i know that is hand to hand like yes there'll be a lot of personal issues we have families we have lovers we have boyfriends we have friends everything but my point is, what I do is, as soon as I have a bad day, I go sit on a horse, even walk. Because that gives me happiness, I take that. And then after that one hour, those problems don't, are not that big. Yeah. You know, so any, so you'll have to balance knowing that what is your meditation, what is your peaceful, because problems will never go. Problems will keep coming, but at the same time, I balance it, I'll just go and play a game of squash. Because I'm hitting the ball, I know that I'm, my frustration is out. And I'm seeing the problem in a better light. Sure. And then every day I make sure I'm reading something nice. Uh, people who inspire me. Michael Jordan is my god. Before even going for a game, I will see a game of his basketball, which I've never played. But that is what inspiring me. That is what makes me go and play a very good game. On my left side, on my right side of my coffee table, I have all his books. Whenever I'm even in a bad mood of fighting with somebody, I'll go and watch basketball, Michael Jordan play. So let's see the pluses. You have your horses, you have music, yeah. you have Michael Jordan. So you and see, you have a whole host of but things But you have to, to understand you. that I'm not lucky. I made it happen. Very important for everyone to know. Please, you yeah. have to work your way up to wherever you yeah. want to be and it's not going to be served in a platter ever. Absolutely. How do you do all of this? Um, where do you get that quest for learning from like how do you keep yourself going again and again and every day reinvent yourself and say hey this is something new that I want to do I want to learn I want to keep at it how does that happen I think mainly is what my passions are so I know from childhood like I'm a Kathak and Bharatnatyam dancer because my parents that wanted too me. like peel after so at five, <laughs> at age of five I, I really owe it to a lot of my pa my parents about this because from age of five she wanted me to be a go-getter and she, so age of five, of course, I didn't know better, but I only knew I wanted to run because I was very good at sports. But she got the music aspect in me. So till by the age of, uh, say, I was graduating, I had two degrees and one in Kathak and one in Bharatnatyam and it, it, it formed me. And then she, she was always in, uh, encouraging me that, yeah, you know, do this, do that. We are supporting you. Of course, that makes a very big difference when you're young, because if your parents and your family don't support you, then... It, it kind of doesn't work sure. and then slowly slowly you definitely know that listen music was my passion but I have to wait for that calling mm. I became a DJ at 45 mm. uh, it, it was my calling because you know I, I my one of my businesses failed in Gurgaon mm. and I had nothing to do there was a you won't believe it which which building has a drum room it was there <laughs> and nobody was playing it Serendipity. I started like I was like, okay, you know, it's just down. Let me start the drums because I have no, I have all the time in the world, yeah. and the business is not going up. And that was the six years back when I went to Gurgaon to open a restaurant. So you have to understand. After still the six years, I felt it was not restaurant is not my calling, not my calling. I moved to Goa six months back, and after six months, I saw this place, and today I have a restaurant. No, oh, very interesting, Rina. So basically, you have not accepted any setbacks in yes. life. You have always tried. Turning it around, flipping yes. it around and making lemonades when life gave you lemons. Yes. Yes. There we have someone teaching you how to live life in totality. So Reena, you have such a grueling schedule and you do so many things and you are a sports person alongside being everything else that you just told us about. 
what does your workout routine look like so because i play a sport which requires muscle and flexibility it's it's kind of contrast right so what i do is that i do yoga four times but every day i do something which has cardio because i have to build my stamina and i work i do a personal training with a a good trainer who knows i need to do my core to play a sport like that to be on the horse i need core right. so basically i first figure out what parts and what i need to play the sport mm. and accordingly i do that reena you end up doing so many things and i'm sure you require a lot of energy for it and the nutrition needs to be bang on to be able to give you that kind of energy and that kind of super power can you please share what are your nutrition practices with us i'm a big believer maybe call me old school but i don't i everything i do is with natural in the morning i will do i will have one spoon of haldi then i'll do aloe vera then i will do um, uh, different green juice so i just feel and i don't diet when well, i'm a typical gujarati girl who want my roti also my dal also and my chawal also so i don't diet i just feel that i have grown up like that and i have come so far why just change it mm. but yes now i have i have i will add avocados i will get my protein i'm a vegetarian right. so that becomes little harder playing a very heavy sport i mean protein intake becomes so i just feel that you need to know your body mm-hmm. but at the same time very very good sleep you need 7 to 8 hours sleep and i also have fun i will go out once in a while weekend i will have a glass of wine i do all of that it's not like i'm like some saint or like all the time at home <laughs> but you know now i'm a dj so but i'm just saying that i think one needs to plan from when they are young yeah. to have a disciplined life and the reason that i've always i mean i'm able to do what i'm doing now it is the product of 20 years back because i've never dieted at all whether i put on 3 kilos or 4 kilos i never weigh myself i just do what i have to do but every day you have to work out So I kind of plan such a way that, and and that actually gives you more energy. Mm. So one needs to know what they want to achieve. Yeah. But I really feel nowadays I see a lot of people dieting and you know rather have a uh, like a protein shake or something. Yes, I mean it always adds when you're doing a certain kind of workout. Mm. But I really would recommend that have natural products and make your life a little more mm. with what you put in just natural stuff. um whatever you said reena kind of leads me to another question and it's it's a very pertinent topic being discussed in the world today sure. especially for women it's yes. called break the bias i want to know from you because it's a predominantly male dominated sport Absolutely. what are the biases that you faced while you were on the field on the ground playing polo as the only woman or the first woman so yes of? so initially it was like you're not strong enough mm. you're not skilled enough you you know I I can't you know I, I it's sad to say that that everybody was just checking me out oh a woman is come so now it's a male thing after the sports you're sitting having a drink with them somebody's trying to hit on you somebody's trying to so you know you're not taken seriously hmm. because it is just something that why is she even trying to do this but as soon as I started doing better and better they started respecting me more and then it was for me to gain that respect and to make a pave a way for the other women and the young girls so they don't have to go through what maybe i went through and to be very honest i mean i was at a level but i could take it because i was 40 i had experienced in life but i don't want the young girls to feel that but somebody had to break that barrier hmm. and when owning my own team already gave me that thing that they they wanted to play for my team right so you know i had to gain certain things and play around and make sure that you know they can't just bump me off so now you have horses and men both on your side yes <laughs> <laughs> absolutely wonderful so reena you have been faced with a lot of biases on ground uh, and you have battled your way out of it what is your one piece advice to all the young girls and the aspirants for sport especially g- girls and women who want to sort of make it big into sports what would you like to tell them I just feel um, the biggest advice I can give somebody is that you have to shut off the other things when you are practicing. When somebody is putting you down or somebody is making fun of you, you just have to shut it off because in any sport, whether it's running, whether it's I mean the main thing is the discipline and the hard work. You, there's no shortcut to that in sport. So you have to just keep at it. And yes, women in India will face. I mean, we have still not gone to that level. 
where you're not going to face and different paths and different things i hear stories whether their teacher was not nice to them because of this but at the same time i feel that i gave an example that at 40 i took up a harder sport mm-hmm. and today people look up to me and women and i inspired at least few women to join young oh, to to join the sport and for me that was the biggest thing that i could have done but i really feel that discipline hard work and you have to be really really strong that no matter what happens you or whatever crossroad you are at you need to just say that you it's just always one one step ahead right. and you will reach so there take baby steps at a time So Rena actually epitomizes everything that we follow at HRX and everything that we suggest that you follow as well for a wholesome healthy living. Rena is completely disciplined when it comes to her regular workouts. Her nutrition practices guide you towards wholesome eating. Uh there are no fad diets involved. There is right amount of rest and sleep. So all of these things is what makes up for the great ingredients to great health. So because Rina is the right amount of fun and right amount of naughty we have like a little rapid fire with her okay. coming ahead. Rina are you ready? Yes. Because this this may be on the naughty side. Oh damn. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All set? Okay. First question. Saturday night or Monday hustle? Monday hustle. DJ come on. That's not No I love I love Monday. I can look forward to Monday. Hot at 40 or lost at 40? Hot at 40. <laughs> Horses or men? Horses any day. <laughs> Early achiever or a late beginner? That's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be diplomatic about this one. I think it's late uh late beginner. Late beginner. High heels or riding boots? Oh damn. <laughs> I'm a shoe designer. Boots, riding boots. boots. I love boots. Racket or drumsticks for oh. stress busting? Drumsticks. She did well. I don't have a hamper unfortunately because we aren't having coffee. <laughs> yeah, but I think well. we did did well and um, super 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 stoked to having chatted with you Rina Thank understanding you so what you're all about, decoding what you do. Thank you so much for sharing these little nuggets of wisdom with our followers and I'm sure everyone's going to benefit from this. Thank you, Thank so, you, much. you so, Thank so much. Thank you so much and I'm I'm just happy to be here to inspire and uh, good luck with HRX. I think you guys have made it fabulous brand um today is the first time i'm here and i can't tell you i'm so impressed i was just telling atyan that uh, it's good to see like an indian brand uh, which is into fitness and you know helping the brand to create more awareness where people and youngsters and all can become fitter in life that concludes our wonderful conversation with reena shah i hope you have a lot to take back with you um and at hrx will keep filling you with such experiences and such learning because we really want to celebrate the spirit of being a woman at hrx and this women's day my little word of wisdom to everyone out there is remember you are a superwoman already you're a superhero already because being women means being a superhero so don't let go of your cape be ready and jump into whatever you believe in find your passion and pursue it keep going